Hi Flosstube, welcome to this video. My name is Anna and I'm here to talk about cross stitch. Today is Sunday, March 5th. A little late giving an update, but I just wanted to show you what I've been working on in February and what I plan to work on in March. Then I will announce the winner of the giveaway and I'll give a little update on life with Ethan, but I think this will probably be a, a pretty short video. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, so I will show you first my full coverage project that I've been working on. I'm focusing on this this year. It's Fright Night by Artisy. Um, the sun is starting to come around into this window. You can, so we'll see how this goes. So, yeah, this is coming along. I'm finishing up in this corner here is all that I have left to do. So, this is where it's at. So, I worked on a diagonal down here. Um, so I finished the diagonal I was working on. I came up and did another one and I've still got a few stitches in here that I need to fill in and I've got some parked threads down here that need to be filled in. Um, but I'm really happy with how this jack lantern is turning out and you can see that a whole lot of this corner that's left has already been stitched. So yeah, it's coming along. I'm feeling more and more optimistic that I can actually finish this this year. Um, I'm thinking, so far I've been doing diagonals across through here. I'm thinking moving forward I might just do cross country as I have a string, like finishing out each of these threads throughout. And then what will happen is I'll leave one color so all of this through here that needs to be filled in is one dark blue. I think it's number eight, two, three. So I like through here, I really don't even need the pattern. I can just fill it in. So I'm thinking I'll do all of the colors except for that one. And then for my last bit on this, I can just fill it in without even dealing with the pattern. So we'll see. That's just kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but I'm just trucking along on this and getting it done. So this is on 18 count white Ada with two strands of DMC. And yeah, hopefully this will be a finish this year. I do like working on it. Um, I am planning later this spring to pull out my other full coverage. So if I can just keep making steady progress on this, I'll be happy with that. Okay. In addition to that one, I also worked on, um, my Teresa Winsler. I'm working on Millennium. Let's see if I can show you the cover. It's shiny. So that's what it looks like. I really like working on this one. This particular project, and I imagine a lot of different Teresa Winslers, um, seems like it has it all. It's got a section of full coverage, it's got one over one, it's got um, like vines with back stitching. It's just, it's got, it's got it all. So I'm really liking working on it. I've got a parked thread here, but this is where I got to. So this past rotation, I brought the arch over here further and I confirmed that there is not a problem with the arch. There is a counting mistake in here. So these two planets, I think it's the earth and the moon. So these two celestial objects are over one too far, but this is correct and this is correct. So I'll just do the outline for the earth here um, based on this section and I'll just do the rest of this over over one. It's something I'm gonna have to remember that this is a problem for the rest of this whole full coverage section but at this point I think that it'll be fine and I can just fill in that the missing stitch with whatever color is closest and it will work out fine. 
So anyway, that's what I've been working on. There's a shooting star through here, so this is the edge of that. Um, I filled in more around these planets. And like I said, I brought the arch down this way, and I triple-checked that the counting is correct all the way around. So should be good to go to move forward on this. This is stitched on 28 count. I don't remember the color. It's 28 count Joblin. Color is stormy gray. So that is where that one is. Like I said, I really like working on it. I it's got so much variety in this one project that I think I could if I just had one project on the go, this would fulfill a lot of the variety that I'm looking for when I rotate through different projects. So it's good. I like it. <laughs> so that was my progress on that one. Let's see. I also worked on a uh, Riolis kit, which is around here somewhere. called White Owl. I traded out the fabric for a navy 14 count instead of this was it came with 14 count flaxen and I am using navy instead and it is it is tough this is a tough it's more challenging than I thought it would be because it's easy to get lost this is all just the same like if this were a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, it would be really difficult to fill all this in because it's all just the same colors and the same pattern. So you really gotta focus. And after working on it for a few days, I got into a rhythm with it. Um, but it's just it's more challenging than I thought it would be to work on. So this is where I got to. And the light is really Maybe if I put it over here. No, not better. So I can't even tell you for sure where I worked. I think that I focused on a 10 by 10 square in here and tried to work this direction. And then I moved up and tried to work this direction, but a couple of colors came up this way. So yeah, that's where I'm at. It, it, it's different to stitch because it uses um, wool acrylic thread. I've shown this before, but it's got like a real fuzzy quality. Uh, the coverage is really thick and not all of my stitches lay really nicely, but because it's an owl and these are all feathers, it's okay with me that it's a little fuzzy and a little bit messier than some of my other projects would be. So that is where I got on White Owl. And yeah, I'm really happy with my fabric choice for it. I think that the whole thing is going to look really nice on that dark blue. So that was my progress there. And then the last one that I worked on was a start and a finish. I worked on a small project from this um, leaflet. There are a lot of things in here that are maybe too cute for me to stitch but some of there are some other ones I want to stitch so I'm gonna put this away in storage it's not a whip anymore but I'm also not getting rid of it and maybe next year I can pull it out and do another cute little small so this is the one that I did I made a couple little changes to it he's this is supposed to be like a long kite with lots of hearts and he's supposed to be blushing on his cheek but other than that it's mostly the same also the String from the kite was supposed to be more squirrely, and I just made it a little simple. Now, I think that he's really cute. I don't know how I'm going to finish him. Maybe find a little frame, but I have no Valentine's Day decorations. I even went to a couple stores this last month, like, okay, I'll just swing through their, you know, their dollar section or whatever and see if I can find something cute, and I just... None of it really spoke to me. I want to be a little more selective with my seasonal decorations, but over the next couple years, I'm hoping to have some Valentine's Day stuff to put out. You know, when you take down, 
I take down Christmas, but I leave out some of the greenery if it's more winter than Christmas. But then at the beginning of February, I take all that down and it's still winter. So it feels just kind of cold and empty in my house. So being able to put up some Valentine's Day things would be nice, I think. So anyway, I think he turned out really cute, really simple. I started to stitch this on 14 count Ada and I did not like it at all. So this is 18 count white Ada with two strands of DMC. So that's my little turtle. <laughs> so that is everything that I stitched on in February. I think about what day, what year is it? What month is it? Um, so yeah, I didn't pull any of my other things out, so I'm going to pause it real quick and then tell you about my plans. Okay, so at the beginning of the year, I sort of mapped out in my planner which projects I wanted to work on in which month to make sure that I worked on all of them at some point. So that plan is already getting adjusted a little bit, um, but I still want to work on everything. So this is what I have written down for this month, but we'll see whether I pull out anything else or yeah, we'll just see how it goes. It's flexible. I just wanted a loose plan so that I stitch on everything. So for March, sticking with a seasonal style, I am going to stitch more spring type things. So one I'm going to work on is this uh, Wee Beasties pattern. This is a Professor Fisbee's pattern. They're out of print and they're really hard to find or they're really expensive. I got this at an estate sale with all the Krynik. Um, so that's the preview for it, which doesn't really do it justice. It's a little picture and it's, a, it's an actual photo taped onto this piece of paper. Um, but I'll show you my starting point here. Maybe the sun will help with this. Wow, that's really, really bright. It's not gonna help at all. Nope. Okay. Just make you guys sick. So my goal for this one is to finish this wing, which just has this little bit left. Oh wow, that's terrible. I don't know what that was. A um, little bit of this wing left, and then I want to backstitch it. So that's my goal for this month. If I can do more of the body or start on this wing, that'd be great. But I'm going to try to be reasonable with my goals this year. I'm just finishing this wing and backstitching it um, is what I'd like to work on. The other one that I want to work on in March is Spring Quakers by Rosewood Manor. And my goal for this one is to finish another one of these little motifs. So I'll probably go down here to this one. My camera really does not like the way the light is coming in the window. Sorry about that. Probably finish that one. So this is my starting point. I'm using the called for materials. Again, I picked this up at, a, at an estate sale, a different one, already all kitted up. Was it a different one or was it the same one? I can't remember now, um, but here it is right now. There, I think moving back from that shaft of sunlight will be best. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check that I finished this big one. I might have a few stray stitches to do, but then I'm gonna move down and stitch the one down here. So those are the two I'm going to pull out for March. I'm also going to continue to work on Fright Night and I'm going to pull out my Winter Cardinals and if I can get started on the back stitch, I think I'll be happier later this year when I go to finish that one. So those are my plans for March. Um, I'm going to pause one more time. And then I'm going to come back and announce the winner of the giveaway from the last episode. So I'll be right back. Okay, last video I said I was going to do a giveaway. I'm giving away this Dimensions kit. It's called Poppy Pattern. Um, so I had, I think I had 21 people leave a comment about poppies in my last video and it drew number 12, which it was um, Sarah B87. So Sarah, I will leave a comment on your comment and we will connect somehow. The, the easiest way is uh, for you to send me a message on Instagram, um, Anna UX, Anna 
U X stitch. Uh, and we'll connect that way and I'll get your address to send you this kit. So congratulations. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Sorry about that. We had a little interruption. Anyway, Sarah, I'll connect with you. Congratulations on winning the kit and I hope that you enjoy stitching it. Um, so yeah, that is it. Oh, I do have one uh, purchase. I signed up for a Fabric of the Month Club, which I've been thinking about doing for a while. On the one hand, I don't really need fabric and I enjoy going to purchase going to kit up fabric on purpose. Like if I pick a project and I want to do something off the wall with the fabric, I liked going I like going to a stitching shop and picking out the right fabric for it. Um, but on the other hand, I think a fabric of the month club would be fun. Um, so there are some big ones that I've thought about getting into and there's just a long wait list. So I decided to sign up for Forbidden Fiber Co. Fabric of the Month. I watch Leanne um, on YouTube and that's that's how I knew about the company is you know a few people mentioning this where they got it but mostly from her floss tube videos um, so I've gotten one fabric so far I signed up for the 32 count Belfast and the fabric that I got this last month was uh, buckwheat so this is oh gosh this is what it looks like let me see if I can I don't really have anything There's a piece of white paper, so maybe that will help. Get it out of the sunlight there. There, that's what it looks like. It's maybe a little darker than that overall, but that's kind of how the modeling is. It's just a really nice neutral. It's maybe a little yellow compared with some of the other ones I have, but that could work great for something. So I'm happy to have it in my stash, and I'm gonna stay in that monthly club for now, and I'm gonna keep on the 32 count Belfast one for now. They have Ada and other sizes, um, but for now I'll do the 32 count since I really like that. Part of the reason I signed up for that is because I had, um, I have not, I don't have other purchases from the last month and I won my fantasy football league so I have some prize money burning a hole in my pocket and so signing up for something like that was kind of a treat and I'm looking forward to getting fabric next month too. So just really quickly a little bit about life with Ethan. Um, my mother-in-law flew in yesterday so she has him upstairs which is part of why I'm trying to make this a quick video. Uh, she's great with him but he might need to eat or he might get fussy so I just want to make sure I'm available and not in my office with the door closed. Um, but anyway life with Ethan. He just turned seven months old uh, new developments. We moved him into his own room. It's just right across the hall from our room so I can actually like see his crib from my bed. Uh, so it's not a huge move but he was getting too big for his mini crib. We were laying him in there at night next to our bed like, on a diagonal so that, <laughs> so that he had room um, and he was starting to stick arms and legs out of the Holes. So we decided to graduate him to his big crib, which we had to put in his own room instead of next to our bed. So that was a big step. I, I want to say that I was totally ready for it and totally fine with it. But that evening after we put him down, I decided I needed to clean our kitchen floors and that they needed more than just a mop. So I was scrubbing the floor with a washcloth like on my hands and knees in the kitchen with a glass of wine and my, my husband commented that maybe I wasn't coping with him moving to his bed like why was I being manic like that and cleaning the floor with my hands on that day <laughs> so I think that it's fine it's a great step for him but I had like a little uh emotional reaction and that's how it manifested was just scrubbing my floors I guess I don't know, is that a totally weird thing? Maybe they're not connected at all, and maybe I shouldn't share that, but that was the notable thing that happened with that moving him to his own room. Other than that, he uh, does not like apples. <laughs> we tried giving him pureed apples. I, it was my fault for giving him 
we like Honeycrisp apples, which are really tart. And so he didn't like those. Uh, I think if we bought, you know, any other type of apple that was had, that's maybe a little sweeter, he would like it. So we'll try pears instead next time. They tend to be sweeter. Otherwise, he, he has started rolling over from his back to his front, which is so cute because he has a method. He'll, he'll, you know, he'll like see what he wants and then he'll like recenter and then he'll throw his legs over. It's very cute. Uh, but he's still not rolling over from his front to his back very consistently. He'll just like lay his face down once he gets tired. Um, so we're getting there. He's starting to get up on his knees and sort of bob his head. So crawling is coming and we're excited for it. We need to baby proof our whole house. Um, that's something that we just kept putting off. Like he's, he can't go anywhere, so we don't need to do anything with the dog's water bowl. And now it's a hazard. So <laughs> gonna deal with that. Otherwise he's great. He got some shots. I can't remember if that was before or after our last video, but he's going in on Tuesday to get his second round of flu shots and his first COVID shot. So Yay! <laughs> It'll be a fun week next week. He's had a reaction to all of his shots so far. Um, so, let's clear my schedule and deal with him, comfort him. He's old enough to have baby Motrin now, so that helps a lot. Uh, what else? Uh, a lot of other things are just kind of down, down the line. We started looking at hiking backpacks to take him hiking. I mentioned in my introduction video, like my whip parade, all these hobbies I do. And I did not mention hiking, I don't think, but that's one of my big ones. I, I love walking and hiking. Um, and I, this winter, I bought a bike. So we're going to be cycling a lot more. Um, so those are two things that I also enjoy doing. Oh, I think that's all that I have today. I am again rambling, so I'm gonna go and hopefully I'll be back in about a month with uh, another update. So thank you for joining me and happy stitching. Bye.